a second, a second part which is more or directly related with uh, the integration of desalination technologies into concentration solar power plants. Uh, okay, the schedule that uh, prepared to, to, to this presentation I divide into into five different parts. The first one is we'll talk about the justification of, of about this this um, concept of the integration to solar power plants. Then uh, to talk about some uh, existing I mean some let's say conventional configuration of dual power and water uh, plant. Uh, in the third part, I will briefly discuss the the potential benefit that we are targeting we are trying to to achieve with these uh, these ideas of integration then we are going to 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 analyze some specific configuration making always the comparison against the uh, in the, the the use of of uh, uh, the with reverse osmosis this is a mistake this is intended to be uh, considered solar power uh, plus uh, reverse osmosis in the, the fourth point instead of MED. And finally some some uh, ideas about the ongoing research activities on this topic. Okay. Uh, clearly the, the basic justification of this this concept of integration of the uh, to solar power plants is because there is a, a very clear synergy and coincidence about the 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 the, the existence of uh, uh, high level of solar radiation and water, let's say, problems of scarcity. Uh, basically, nearly all the, the areas in the world in which we have a significant uh, amount of uh, solar radiation is, is very high are uh, typically the same location in which we have problems of uh, lack of sufficient water for uh, human and industrial uh, application. Uh, Okay, so it's clear that the, the combination, the integration of, of, of uh, designation to CSP, CSP means uh, concentrated solar powers uh, the facilities, uh, is a very attractive sol solution because, fairly, because like I said, uh, I mean, in most of this location, the projects, the, the, there are, uh, at this time there are a lot of projects just on, on CSP uh, developing around the world. So the, the financing of this project is, is could be much more uh, easy, it could be the, the much more uh, favorable than just the, 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 the production of power. This is because the project could be more attractive to local stakeholders than just the production of, of one of these independent, uh, let's say, uh, product like power of water. In the second is because there is a number of technological synergies that we can identify and we can use this synergy to potentially reduce the cost of combined power and water production against the independent production of, of the same products. I mean, uh, as we will see the, along this presentation, there are a significant number of po possibilities that we can profit each other to the, to the production of both items. As uh, the third is the one that I said before, the financial sc scheme could also benefit. Uh, th this is make more more uh, favorable the, the possible financiation of this. Also, we can play with another possibility that we can we can use the the the, the, the cost of water and, and power and and the price of the the the, 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 the price of both uh, items to be adapted to the specific local conditions. However, this concept has uh, some, let's say, some some weak points. And the first one is that I mean, obviously, if we are thinking about to to combining and concentrate solar power and in a solar power facility and designation, we need to be obviously close to the sea. And this is first uh, it, it would be a, a significant problem of land availability because solar this, uh, solar system needs uh, a large amount of, of land. The second is the, the direct normal radiation, I mean the, the, the direct light, the sunlight that we need to the to the uh, solar power plants is normally lower and areas close to the sea. So this is has to be also assessed. And 
In the third point is that there are some specific technological aspects that are not yet properly solved. I mean, this is that is also related with the with the point that um, that I let's say in this technological synergies that it could be used, but um, uh, specifically the uh, technological de de development still must be done. Okay, uh, just making a, a, a brief uh, overview of the, the the situation of of what are the, the the areas in the world that has more uh, deficit, more more problem of of water is uh, you can see in this in this uh, picture in this graph. This is taken from one uh, United Nations report, in the uh, is the the Human Development Report, which is one of the most relevant report that is published every fifth to seven year by the United Nations. And you can see here uh, what are the areas in which we have a significant water stress. Water stress means that the, the all the, 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 the surface water has been uh, fully used and uh, the, the activity, normal activity, is, is uh, running basically on, on the water sources. And this is uh, just over exploited in different level of, of um, you can see by the gray color of this. Uh, one of the areas in which uh, uh, this is uh, this over exploitation is more severe, and this is also one of the uh, the same area in which uh, CSP is 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 seen that one of the most promising application is the the, the MENA region. MENA means uh, North uh, Middle uh, uh, Middle East and North African countries, and just making an, an analysis. This is uh, taken from the uh, presentation from uh, last year in the, the fifth World Water Forum in Istanbul. You can see uh, all these uh, MENA countries. What is the, uh, the the water availability per capita? This is the the, the uh, this this bl blue line. This is the, what is the availability in the year 1995. What it is expected to be in the year 2025. And you can see that in all the countries, this is clearly a significant reduction. Uh, on the other graph, you can see the population. How this, this is the, the population. This is uh, in the year 95. What is expected the population in the year 2025? So uh, this means that the, the, the from the water point of view, this is uh, uh, a problem which the, 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 the future is seen like, like, like more problematic than, than today. And uh, a lot of much more water will be needed in the future. This is another uh, graph in which you can see the what is the uh, for the different countries this is the the amount of water that it is used for surface water and this is from underground and you can see that just when uh, uh, skipping the case of Egypt from the from the Nilo River and Morocco all the others uh, has r basically are based on warm water source uh, to to normally uh, uh, use at 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 local level uh, a special case is Saudi Arabia in which the, 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 the amount is, is significantly high. Even in this case, most of the wrong water, wrong, uh, water uh, extracted water needs to be desalinated. So it is expected that the, uh, the, the, the today the, the deficit, the water deficit in all this area is about 60 billion cubic meters per year. So this is equivalent basically a one Nilo river. This is the, the, the water that is carried by the Nilo around one year. So by the year 2050, it is esti estimated that this deficit of one Nilo, this is the existing deficit, will rise to 2.5 Nilos. So uh, at this moment, you can see that the, the, the total consumption of, of, of water in this uh, all these countries is uh, exceeded the, the 200 billion cubic meters per year. So this is why uh, in desalination is is a very uh, not very is is a is a absolutely basic activity in all these countries. And when desalination is addressed in 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 this area and and many other of the world, but especially in this area, normally all the the plants the combined uh, are uh, the, the desalination plants are integrated into power plants. 
basically because they they profit from the the, the in as I mentioned it's a very intensive energy consumer activity and they profit from the from the steam that are produces in the, in the power uh, cycle to drive basically MSF or MED multi flash or multi effort designation system typically the the power ratio that we can uh, assess in all this plan is that we can produce about uh, 1.5 or to 1.2 to 1.5 tons of, of steam per megawatt installed to drive this designation system and typically we can produce about 21,000 cubic meters per every 100 megawatts of installed power at these plants. In the picture you can see the this is the one of these plants, the Fujiwa in the United Arab Emirates, it's close to, to Dubai, which is also a power plant with hybrid designation, thermal and also reverse osmosis. It's producing nearly 400,000 cubic meters per day of designated water. So we are dealing with very large in, uh, facilities by contrast with the, the different technology that we were discussing we presented last 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 week which were I in low level production capacity so in a power cycle you can see this is a typical we have some thermal energy that <coughs> we goes to do this thing we goes to uh, a turbine and then we have a, a, a cooling process uh, this as you can see the the one of the, the basic ideas here is that uh, in this steam cycle, uh, if we have an overall efficiency about 40%, this means that the, 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 the this 40% is the electricity that is produced against the, the energy that it is put it in the in the boiler. So that means that the other 60% is basically throw out to the ambient in the condenser. So this is a, a huge amount of energy, okay? Because if we have here, let's say, an, an and a uh, turbine producing and, and generator producing, let's say, about uh, 400 megawatts of electricity. This means that in the cooling process, we are losing uh, about 1.5 this is uh, That means about 600 megawatts of energy. So this is, is a huge amount of thermal energy thrown to the ambient. So what is the basic idea? So the basic idea that uh, we try to um, uh, achieve here is to try to, or, or the, the, the goal, the, the final goal would be try to replace the, the cooling process by the designation process. Because the, the, the it, it happened that the, and targeting especially the, the technology of MED, of multi-effort distillation, uh, because the, the, the enthalpy that it is needed by the MED, MED, you know that works normally at temperature lower than 70 Celsius at his uh, first uh, uh, cell. So this, this temperature means an enthalpy which is very close to the enthalpy that we have at the turbine output. So uh, in principle, we could think that it could be uh, interesting to try to figure out how we can m introduce a designation system replacing the conventional cooling of the, of the steam cycle. What are the, the, the let's say the conventional uh, schemes that are using up to now in this in this with this approach? So I mean the the one of the the possible is the the one that you can see here is co to combine a gas turbine with an an, an thermal distillation uh, process. Uh, typically and here is MSF. Uh, the idea is that we have the, the gas turbine, we have the the, the hot gases, and we have a, a uh, waste heat recovery boiler to produce steam and to drive the uh, designation process. In this scheme, typically the power to water production ratio is about four to one. I mean, for each uh, four uh, electric me uh, megawatts produced, we can produce about one cubic hectometer of water per year. So this means that with about 250 megawatts of gas turbine, we can uh, produce uh, deliver energy to produce about 66 
cubic hectometer per year in a com let's say conventional thermocompressor MED desalination plant. Okay, what is the let's say the problem of this this approach? I mean to use one uh, uh, gas turbine to produce. Uh, so here we can we can see very clear what is the the, the the implication of this approach from the thermodynamic point of view. Uh, this is a, a, a simulation. This of the this is the the, the 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 gas the gas cycle. This is the gas turbine. We have the compression. We have the air. The combustion chamber. Uh, we produce uh, hot air up to let's say uh, a number of of uh, more than 100 Celsius. We expand the turbine until nearly 580 Celsius, and then we cool by by producing a steam and this steam uh, of uh, let's say about 330 uh, degrees and four bars we put uh, with uh, uh, as as live steam to a thermocompressor and drive a conventional MED plant in this case if we make the analysis from the energy loss method i mean uh, this analysis means that okay if we instead of two use this steam to drive the multi-effort desalination plant, desalination plant. We use the steam to to run uh, a conventional steam turbine and produce electricity. Uh, this uh, electricity is the one that we are losing. So if we divide the amount of electricity by the amount of, of uh, uh, water that it is produced by the, by the desalination plant, then we have a figure of 27.15 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. So this is the energy that really is costing our, our uh, desalination plant. Because if we, instead of to put the, the, this plant, we put a, a power system, uh, we, we produce can produce the equivalent of 27.15 kilowatt hour per each cubic meter of water uh, produce it. So this is uh, uh, clearly quite quite high. Okay. What is the other other configuration? Uh, we have we have this uh, the combination of uh, in this case of uh, steam turbine with uh, a high pressure boiler and uh, to produce to produce steam to drive the desalination plant. In this case, the, the typical uh, here, the, the, the idea is the same, but instead of to have a, a gas cycle, we have a, a steam cycle. The idea here is uh, also just the same to, to, to produce a steam, and this steam from the from the from the turbine, uh, it, in this case is uh, taking about uh, three bar or less to drive a uh, uh, MD plant. Typical power to water ratio here is about three to one. So we have about uh, uh, one cubic hectometer we can produce by every every three megawatts of nominal power. This means that with uh, about 100 megawatts system by we can deliver energy to produce about uh, 33 cubic hectometer per year per year in a desalination plant. Other possibility is to have a combined cycle. We have the, the gas turbine, and then we have the the the, the, the heat exchanger for, for to recover the, the the energy, and then goes to a to a steam cycle, and then goes to the to the uh, desalination plant. I mean, it's just the same. At the end, for I me, mean for the point of view of the of the desalination system, is just the same. And here, typically, the the, the ratio is nine to one. I mean, we can produce one cubic hectometer by each nine megawatts of nominal power produced. So, uh, one thousand megawatt of combined cycle cycle, we can uh, deliver energy to produce about one hundred and ten cubic hectometer per year of desalinated water. Okay. What are the figures in this case if we consider the same approach of uh, uh, energy uh, energy lost? So uh, in this case, uh, we have considered this is a, a steam turbine. And then we take 
typically with the steam tur normally all the uh, steam turbine has normally two blocks the the high the high pressure and the low pressure and then we have an extraction from the from the high pressure uh, block to a reheater and then just to 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 introduce into the low pressure and then we make an an extraction from this from this thing to drive the the thermal compressor which is the one who drive the MED so uh, if we instead of to 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 make this extraction we introduce again all the all the the, the steam into the into the low pressure turbine we can obtain a number of 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 kilowatt at the end and this the difference of of the produced energy between the one that we the energy that we produce if we doesn't make this extraction and the one making the extraction is the energy loss and if we divide this amount of energy the by the total amount of water produced and this is in this case is 39,660 uh, uh, cubic meters per day so we have the, the the real cost from the energy point of view of the, the water that we are producing. So in this case, oh, this water cost has 19.9 .9 kilowatt hour electric per cubic meter because this electricity is the one that we have lost to be producing the turbine. So still, if we compare with reverse osmosis, very high. Okay, what if we make the same analysis, but instead of to to make to take the steam from the from the the uh, two block from the high pressure to low pressure turbine, we made an extraction just at the end of the I mean of, uh, of the turbine. I mean the, the exhaust steam, considering that the the, the we designed this the the turbine to uh, get this this steam at 70 Celsius instead of the typical from uh, 40 to to 55 depending on the, the situation. So in this case the, you can see that the figure uh, changed dramatically because in this case the, the the energy cost, I mean the energy loss that we, we have here is just 4.5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. Significantly lower than the one that we have before. And um, so this is uh, the first, I mean the, the first conclusion is that the, the, the typical approach the, uh, to use thermocompressors is uh, we are from the thermodynamical point of view is highly inefficient against just to drive a uh, conventional uh, multi-effort without thermal compression. Okay, and finally from the conventional approach we have the, the, the hybrid configuration in which we have the combined cycle, gas turbine, and a steam turbine with a heat exchanger just to recover the energy from the hot gases of the of the gas cycle to drive a thermal designation plus a reverse osmosis uh, system uh, in which we are using the, the electricity produced either by the gas turbine or the, the steam turbine. This configuration is, is um, typically uh, the one that we can use just to uh, to adapt the, the 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 power, I mean the power uh, cycles, I mean the power production, to the, the demand of the energy. Oh, sorry, to the demand of the of the water. So typically, in there are uh, many countries in which the the, the electricity consumption, the consumption, electricity demand, is uh, especially higher in summer for for cooling for cooling application. But in summer, the, the electricity demand uh, is uh, significantly lower. So in this case, we can use this excess of electricity to drive the, the reverse osmosis system to produce additional uh, water. Also, this, this uh, system has an additional advantage, like the, the uh, reducing the, the temperature of the, of the, the water producer water. Typically, the, the water that is produced by thermal desalination system, the water, the, the distillate water, is uh, obtaining at high temperature and needs to be cool. So if, if we combine it with the, the one produced by reverse osmosis, we can reduce this this uh, this uh, temperature. And also, the bottom removal. I think typically, most of the re reverse osmosis system cannot uh, remove the, the bottom, but uh, this is the, the case of the, the, the 
this is sorry this is not the case of the of thermal dissension system so if we miss the water we solve both the, the problem of the, the the borrow content and the temperature of the of the at the uh, producer water okay so what are the the, the benefits uh, so as i said at the beginning the the, the goal of all the, the idea behind this is to try to 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 use the 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 the, the MED, basically the MED, the the desalination system, as the as the, the the cooling process of the of the uh, uh, of the power plant. So uh, I'm going to 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 make with you a, a, a brief analysis of the one just to to make one reflection about this point. First, we have to to consider some some uh, initial data about about this system the first one the first one is the the investment and uh, because we are going to to make the comparison of of the 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 economical comparison of combining a multi-effort distillation plant with a solar plant against the the, the use of reverse osmosis system so uh, typically the investment cost of MED plant today is around 1,550 euros per installed cubic meter per day. The average electricity consumption of MED, we are considering 1.5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. This is the, the typical figure of the, the, the pumps to, to handle the, 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 the water and to, to maintain and the, the vacuum inside the, 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 the system. The thermal Average energy consumed by an MED, we can. This is a, 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 a figure considering an, an, an uh, let's say performance ratio of about 10. It's about 65 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. This is real data. The investment cost of reverse osmosis plant is about uh, 850 euros per installed cubic meter per day. So it's, it's lower than the investment cost of MED. The average electricity consumption of reverse osmosis that we are considering to this to this assessment is the about 3.5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. So this is just uh, let's say a state of the art uh, uh, consumption uh, with uh, pressure exchanges just to reduce the, the 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 consumption. The thermal energy that it is consuming by the reverse osmosis is uh, zero because uh, we are that's consuming no energy no thermal energy here. The life plan that we are considering, the amortization, is about 20 years, just to make the assessment. Okay, these are our data, and then we have to make some hypotheses. Okay. The first one is that we are going to consider, to make this, this assessment, a power plan of 50 megawatts working 24 hours a day. I mean, we are considering in this case, a solar power plant of 50 megawatt, which is the typical solar power plant that is now uh, installing in many, many parts of, of the world. And we are considering that it has the, the sufficient thermal storage to work 24 hours per day. Uh, as we are considering as a steam cycle, ranking cycle, the efficiency is uh, about 38%. So that means that the, the thermal energy input that we will need to produce these 50 megawatts, this dividing 50 between 0.38 is 131.6 megawatts of, of energy that we have to put into the into the input the process. So that means that the energy that it will go to the cooling is will be, if we consider that we have about 5% of, of losses around all the, the cycle, will be around 57% that it is the, the energy that we are going to lose into the cooling. So that means that the, 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 the equivalent mean energy that we are losing into the, the energy would be about 75 megawatts. If we divide it, uh, this 131 between uh, 0.57, so this is the, the energy that we have at the, at the uh, we are losing into the cooling process and we are producing 50 megawatts of net energy uh, by the turbine. So the basic hypothesis that I wanted to, to stress is that, that we are going to consider that we could use all this energy okay, 
uh, without any penalty to the power generation of the turbine to the desalination process. I mean, let's assume that you can use all this energy to drive an MED plant, okay, without any any disturbance. I mean, with uh, without loss anything uh, about power generation. Just to make the comparison with reverse osmosis. So, in this case, the maximum water that we the, 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 the water that we are to produced by the MED could be about 28,000 cubic meters per day. That this figure is, is is achieved just dividing these 75 megawatts that we we are losing into the the cooling by the energy that this is the the thermal energy that we have to we need to produce one cubic meter of water, which is 65 kilowatts. Okay. So our data is that as consequence. Therefore, we have a desalination plant which is going to produce 28,000 cubic meters per day. So this means that the yearly water production will be 10.22 hectometer cubic hectometers. The investment cost of our MED plant to produce this water will be 29.4 million euro, assuming the, the cost of 1,050 euros per cubic meter installed that we saw in the previous sli slide. The investment cost of a uh, reverse osmosis plant to produce the same amount of water will be 23.8 million euro. And our electricity cost, it will be our incognita. This is the, 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 the one that we are going to, to, to calculate. I mean, what could be the cost of electricity to make one system preferable against the other? I mean, to, to go to reverse osmosis or to go to, to MED when we couple it with an uh, thermal uh, power plant. So the calculation that we are going to, to make is very, very simple. In just we are going to, to divide the investment uh, against the amortization period, 20 years, and we are going to, to include the, 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 the cost of the produced by the, the energy that we con consuming, multiplied by the water volume by the energy cost. Okay. So in this case, we are going to consider no operation and maintenance cost, which in the case of reverse osmosis is clearly significant because we have to periodically replace the membrane. But we are go not going to, to consider any operation or maintenance, just energy cost and investment. So in this case, what could be the simplified yearly cost in the case of MED? So we have that this is we have the, the investment, 29.4 million euro divided by 20 years plus the electricity cost, 1.5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. This is the, the, the electricity cost of running the, the pumps and the, and the vacuum, multiplied by the, the amount of water that we are producing, 10.22 uh, cubic hectometer per year, and multiplied by the electricity cost, which is our incognita, you remember. Okay, plus zero of thermal energy, because this is our basic assumption that we take the energy the, the, as free without any penalty to the turbine, okay, to the to the power block to production of electricity. What is the simplify the, the, the same analysis in the cost of reverse osmosis? So in this case, we have the, the investment is a little lower, is 23.8 million euro, okay, and we have to this this figure we have to add the, the, the cost of the electricity. In this case, we are assuming you remember 3.5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter produced multiply by the the total amount of water 10.22 cubic hectometer multiply by the electricity cost so what is the electricity cost to break even i mean we make a equal to b and then we obtain it by the value of x so so the answer is that the x is about point 1.4 euro cents. To, so that means that the, with the, all the assumption and the hypothesis that we have made, that the, the no uh, operational maintenance cost and basically the, the, the we can use we could use all the energy from the the the, uh, the cooling process to drive the, uh, the MED the MED system without any penalty. So if the electricity cost is lower than 1.4 Euro cent per cubic per kilowatt hour, okay. Then 
the reverse osmosis cost always will, will be preferable, will be cheaper to go to MED. Okay, so the, I mean, in this case, there is any any sense to try to uh, address any kind of technological development to try to to achieve this goal. But if the electricity cost is higher than 1.5 euro cents, then in this case, the reverse osmosis cost is higher than the emitter. So clearly, you can assume that the electricity cost will never will be lower than 1.5 euro cents. Will be clearly higher, at least one order of magnitude, and then, uh, or in the range of one order of magnitude, and then uh, we can. It makes sense to try to make the research to try to address to 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 achieve this, to try to use this uh, steam from the from the oil of the turbine to drive the MED process. In addition, there are, there are another two interesting things that should be should be uh, referred. One is the 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 cooling requirement of the of the CSP plants. The cooling is typically is 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 a problem in the in the CS plant and especially in the desert uh, because uh, I mean uh, all the the the, the 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 water that we need to the conventional cooling uh, is higher. We need more water than in any conventional uh, power plant. The reason is because you could see that in in. Uh, in a conventional steam cycle, we can go to temperature higher, about 500 Celsius. Uh, and in the case of, of uh, let's say, solar, we are normally limited in the range of about 400 Celsius, 400 plus. So that means that the the the, the energy that we can produce to the expansion of the of the, of the, tu of the turbine is clearly lower uh, in the case of the of the solar. But the, the cooling requirements are very similar. So that means that the, 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 the specific amount of water for the cooling per each uh, electric megawatt, megawatt hour produced by, by the system is higher in the case of solar, solar technologies. So uh, there are a number of possibilities to make this cooling. The, the typical is the, 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 the watt cooling tower. And uh, normally or typically, uh, 50 megawatts of solar power plant require about six cubic meters per megawatt hour produced. So that means that uh, we need daily about 1,600 cubic meters per of water to make the cooling. So this is the w the equivalent, the water equivalent to feed uh, a city of 25,000 people. So. What is the alternative? The alternative is to go to dry, to dry cooling, uh, but we have to to pay a, a penalty. In which this penalty is that uh, we have the investment is is much higher. We have to to increase about three percent of the total investment of the plan, and also uh, the efficiency is is lower. We we lost about three percent of the electricity produced just to to dry the the the. the the cooling tower. I mean, part of this three percent of the energy is needed to make possible the cooling. So, and there is no no option. So, the the possibility to use the the the, the desalination system as as the cooling uh, could solve this this problem. The, uh, it provide an additional alternative to provide the cooling of the conventional power cycle. Okay. Let's go now to make some kind of analysis about the, the comparison of different configuration of this of, of uh, integration of reverse osmosis and uh, MED plant into a uh, CSP plant. To to make this, we are going to to use one example of uh, um, this is one uh, study made at one specific location in Spain. Uh, we are considering one location in the south coast of, of, of uh, south east, south east part of Spain. It's a location called Palomares, and it's in the, in the, in, in the sea, in which we have a, a, a DNI, uh, normal irradiation, of 1,919 kilowatt hour of per uh, square meter and year of solar, direct solar irradiation. 
Uh, so we are considering the installation of a solar power plant at this location, uh, which this combined with an, an, an uh, uh, solar desalination facility. And in all the cases, all the examples that we are going to, to show you in the, in the coming minutes, uh, have the same production. 50 megawatts of electric net, net delivered to the grid, and 46,615 cubic meters per day of water desalination water production. This figure is, is I, I will explain later what the reason of this figure. So we are assumed that the, 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 the plan, as in, the, in, the, in the private example, we have sufficient thermal storage to guarantee the 24 hours a day of operation. This is just to make, to make easier the, the, the comparison and the, and the assessment. Uh, the efficiency of the of the uh, of the of the cycle we have to I mean we have to consider the, the production of, of energy at the turbine just to to uh, to drive all the pumps and all the, the electricity that is needed by the sanitation system so uh, the, the the power production of the turbine is the one to deliver the, the 50 megawatt net to the grid and also to all other systems of the combined water and power plant and the the efficiency that we are going to 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 calculate here will be the the combined power and water efficiency i mean this is we are going to divide the the, the total power that we are have to produce this this net just to to drive the turbine and all the the pumps uh, divided by the Sorry, no, this is the, the net, the 50, 50 megawatts produced divided by the total, okay? Uh, which is given by the by the sum of the, the, the all the, the consumption, the internal consumption of the system. So we select to the when we make the calculation of one one solar system, one we have to select a, a, a designing point, we have to select one day, which way we, we are going to consider at uh, conservative 12th of September and uh, the, this 12th of September this is the, 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 the irradiation at this day and at noon we have the the, the, the point of the, the, the sign the point of the sign is 915.9 watts per square meter so uh, the first I mean the reference this in our case the reference uh, configuration for us will be the one in which we are going to a conventional steam cycle to produce energy and a reverse osmosis plan. So in this case, we have to produce the, the energy just to, to deliver the 50 uh, megawatts net and the electricity that we are consumption to, to drive the reverse osmosis system plus all the internal pumps and consumption of the, of the system. So in this case, the, the net, the combined deficiency that we have to power and water production is 29.2. So that means that the, all the, the energy that we have to, we are considering here the energy from the, from the uh, not from the sun, but the energy from the, from the uh, uh, thermodynamic cycle, I mean the energy that we are extracting for the thermal storage to drive all this, this system. And we are considering that the uh, the exhaust steam is is, is uh, from the turbine is extracted at 42 Celsius. Okay. In this case, we can also make the 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 analysis, the assessment of what could be the configuration of the solar field to make this 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 possible. We will need in total uh, about 746,650 square meter of uh, parabolic truss, aerotruff type of, of uh, LS3, of SCAL, LT, this kind of, of collector that are the conventional using at uh, uh, solar power plants. In this configuration, the, the power, the, the cooling requirement will be the 100%. We, I mean, we, we need to, to condense all the steam at the, at the condenser. Okay, what are the, another case, will be the, the one that we have, instead of to have a uh, reverse osmosis, we have a uh, MED plant with thermocompressor 
extracting from the from the uh, high pressure uh, block from the turbine we extract some some steam okay we have a reheater here this is going to this line to the thermal compressor to drive the the uh, the midi plant in this case we are just extracting make one extraction the low pressure turbine goes up to the 40 42 celsius which is the the exhaust steam of the of the turbine and we are using multi flow of 17 bars just to drive the thermal compressor in this case the 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 the, the cooling requirement of the plant will be reduced to 52 percent i mean approximately half of the of the steam is is using to the to the uh, MED plant and the net combined efficiency in this case is 21.7 percent okay lower than in the case this is this configuration the the production the water produced by this MED plant is 46,615 cubic meters per day this is why we have used this this amount of water production uh, to be produced in the, the same in the other configuration to make possible the direct comparison of, of this scheme so and uh, all this scheme we are producing the same amount of water and the same amount of energy we can directly produce the, uh, we can directly make the comparison of this figure okay in this case we need much more uh, solar collector as the efficiency is lower this means that the number of, of uh, solar collectors that we will need to have this to, to drive this system will be much bigger we need about one million of square meter of solar collector typically one solar plant that this is just devoting to to uh, produce uh, electricity uh, with thermal storage about eight uh, hour thermal storage is in the range of 500 to 600 thousand square meter of solar collector okay another configuration is the one in which we have in, instead of to to make the extraction of of the the low pre the high pressure turbine to drive the thermal compressor we are using an extraction from the low pressure turbine okay of about four in this case four bars not 17 bars to drive a thermal compressor and to drive the the MD plant in this case the, the efficiency increased significantly we are just here 26.2 percent and the cooling requirement will be similar to the about 45 percent of the of the cooling is uh, <coughs> this higher efficiency is also reflected on the total uh, amount of solar collector that we need 831,000 square meters okay another configuration is that is, is to use an, an low L LTM low, low temperature uh, med I mean not to use thermal compressors just to end in this case the exhaust steam instead of to 42 Celsius to end at 70 Celsius and then drive completely the MD plan in this case the, the cooling requirement will be zero okay and then the efficiency that we have the combined efficiency in this case is 27.7 percent and the total aperture area and we need is uh, 786,000 87,000 square meters of solar collector so as you can see the efficiency the, the the combined power and water efficiency is going to be higher as lower the pressure that we are uh, using to drive the MED process basically the, the reason is the one that we discussed at the beginning because the energy that we lost in the power cycle is 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 lower we can see here one of the summary of this this um, uh, approach this is could be this is the the overall efficiency of the of the of the system this red line is the one that we have in the case of of reverse osmosis and this this uh, uh, line this pink gel line is the one that we have with uh, turbine extraction against the pressure of the steam so if, if we go to higher pressure then mean that the, the the overall efficiency goes down so we have to to go as 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 as, as much as higher as possible just to to increase the efficiency but still even that at the lowest possible pressure 
is two bars just to to drive one one uh, thermo uh, two uh, thermocompressor MED system and uh, this is considering the the the, the San Cristina 42 Celsius here this is the you can see the 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 the, the power that we have to, to dissipate in the condenser in the case of of uh, uh, reverse osmosis we have to dissipate about 120 megawatts thermal megawatts uh, remember we are producing 50 megawatts of, of net electricity production and uh, depending on the, the the structure we have to uh, cool from 20 up to more than 40 megawatts uh, just if we use a an, an, uh, multi-effort distillation system at. As, okay, as I said this is the figures that um, we have at about 42 Celsius of uh, temperature from the uh, exhaust steam from the turbine. If we make this analysis, it's, it's not made here, but if we make this analysis in the case of let's say 58 Celsius, which is the typically the temperature that we have in, in most Middle East uh, power block, and uh, we consider that the, the 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 electricity consumption from the reverse osmosis system, instead of to be uh, four between 3.5 and four kilowatt hour per cubic meter, is six, which is the case of of uh, uh, highly salty water. Then in this case, the the, the figure that we have from the efficiency are higher in the case of low low structure than the one that we have from reverse osmosis. In any case, as I said, the, 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 I mean the, the research possibilities about to, to, to try to, to make the assessment of different technologies and configuration to achieve this goal that I said before, to, to use this, this uh, sting without penalizing the turbine or penalizing as less as possible the the the, the production always comparis make the comparison with reverse osmosis is uh, still very attractive. Okay, uh, one comment just to to go to the end that uh, uh, this is one of the, the items that uh, was said at the beginning. Uh, we have the the additional benefit in this integrated production of water and and, and power that we can play with the uh, some financial strategies. I mean, depending of the of the of the situation, we can uh, let's uh, uh, assign one, let's say, higher cost to the water production and lower cost to the to the to the power. If we have some kind of subsidies of the of the water cost, just to play with this, or just the opposite, if the the the, the one that is sub subsidized is the the power cost, we can just assume uh, assign. Let me. Let, Transfer part of the cost of the water to the to the to the power and vice versa, okay? Or just one intermediate strategy. This is the case. This is one study made of the Andasol one plan is is in, in uh, Spain uh, near Granada, in which the the the, the company Flaxol made this this analysis of what could be depending of the of the of the cost. Assign it to the to the the, the, the water the, the water uh, produced. We can we have a different cost of the of the electricity produced in this this plant. So we have can go from 14 euro cents up to uh, let's say 20 near 20 euro cents of of kil, uh, kilowatt hour the the, the cost the le level levelized electricity cost and the levelized water cost could be from 1.4 up to let's say 0 0.4, 0 0.3 euro per cubic meter producer. So just finally, just to to inform you that I mean, uh, I'm working at uh, Plataforma Solar de Almería, just to, to, to introduce the, our center. This is uh, one of the biggest and most complete uh, system facilities around the world to, to all the research, testing and technological development of, of solar technology, different solar technology and applications. This is um, uh, defined, formally defined as a large European scientific installation that uh, belonging to CIMAT. CIMAT is a, is a public Spanish institution devoted to energy and environment and uh, with a number of, of facilities around, around the country. And uh, one of these facilities is Plataforma Solar. It uh, has a very large number of facilities.
and and and, uh, and uh, research uh, uh, devices in more than 100 hectares. Here you can see some pictures of different systems that we have at uh, this facility. And one of the the, the topics, the, the topics with uh, special research is the salination. We have a number of facilities basically addressing nearly all or most of the system that I, I explained last week within the presentation of last week and also the one that I have addressed today. Uh, with this end we are just uh, concluding now, we are finalizing the, the installation that we call CSP plus D test bed. I mean is we in, in uh, intense the acronym intends to be considered solar power and designation. We have one uh, installing in this uh, uh, building this is that you can see here Le uh, a power block simulator we are going to basically to to have uh, different uh, several uh, steam generator to simulate the 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 steam produced by the turbine the the, the 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 input of the turbine any kind of intermediate extraction and the the any uh, all the range of possible uh, exhaust steam and then to connect to an MED uh, the, the plant that I, I introduced it last, last week, we have a 14 FX MED plant. So the, this this power this system will be connected to the power plant to make possible the the uh, the assessment of different uh, com uh, integrated strategies, but also to test specific technological ideas to try possible to 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 if not to achieve to to go closer to this goal of 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 uh, use this this steam from the uh, south system for the turbine to to drive the 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 uh, designation process uh, okay here there are several pictures and this this all this facility we have uh, about 500 kilowatts of power so we could have uh, steam up to more than 500 Celsius and 100 bars to drive a number of, of steam adapter, of a number of, of ideas and configuration, coupled with the MED plan to check how the this combination, what is the, 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 the best combination with the existing technology today, how this could make the, the interaction, just how this af could affect the performance of the of the designation and vice versa how the designation could affect the performance of the of the power block and also to to explore uh, a specific technological innovation just to to try to improve the uh, the assessment the the the, the, the different uh, combination and uh, possible integration that i showed you before in the previous slide so just to go to the conclusions Yes, um, I have to say that uh, clearly, uh, sea water desalination by means of solar energy is a very promising application because clearly we have the the all the places in which we have uh, water problem, uh, water stress, and, and water scarcity. We have have uh, a lot of typically of solar irradiation. Uh, it is obviously essential to achieve, uh, to optimize the, the water efficiency and energy efficiency to optimize the, the investment cost. And here most of the existing conventional uh, approach that are today used to, to make these hybrid water and power uh, facilities are far to be, to be optimized for the thermodynamic point of view. And besides uh, reverse osmosis is today the leading designation technology and uh, in many parts of the world. I think that there is clear room to, to try to use thermal designation technologies integrated into this system and not only at a special region in which this uh, thermal designation has a, a, a clear dominance but in, in, in other parts of, of the world. This optimization uh, is not yet defined. I mean, there are a different approach and we have to still to, to I mean, some more research should be needed uh, and also specific ideas and concept must be uh, still checked and, 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 and assessment just to, to still to define what is the, 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 the optimum integration of a thermal designation system into solar power plant. And here, uh, multi effect distillation is a mature and reliable technology, and uh, clearly today is the best option to this integration into thermal designation. Uh, process considering dual water and power plant. 
However, I have to say that uh, because today clearly the option is multi-effect. I, I, we have to to keep an eye to other possible technologies, and uh, here especially I have to I would like to mention the membrane dis distillation technology, which today is uh, still very very far to to this, but with the proper uh, advancement, with the proper improvement that uh, are a lot of several companies with uh, a lot of uh, effort on the on the way. Uh, it could be a very good option to, in the future, to consider also as a possible technology to make this integration, and maybe other technologies. But I mean, uh, clearly we are focusing on MED, but uh, we I don't uh, discard, and in the future we can even consider other technologies to make this approach. Okay, yeah, that's all. Just uh, thank you very much to you for your attention, and uh, okay, I'm open to to address uh, the question that you could make. Okay, Julian, thank you very much for your presentation and your um, interesting, interesting ideas and suggestions for this um, desalination applications. So uh, you can submit your questions and uh, we'll be treating uh, one by one from now. So, um, okay, let me check some of them. One moment, please. Okay, this is a question about the, if this technology is um, achievable in Nigeria. Uh, I don't know the, 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 the characteristic of Nigeria, but I think that Nigeria uh, I don't know how it would be the, the, the direct irradiation, but um, I think in principle uh, I have the feeling that not, just because the, the, the solar irradiation level would be not sufficiently higher, but um, uh, I, I don't have the information. I, it, it, would, it would have to check. Uh, what is the project of the presented plant? Uh, okay, we have we have not made the the uh, the, the assessment of the cost, uh, and uh, with one of the uh, the reason to this is because uh, we have to to make this assessment now just to make what is the the best the best uh, configuration. Uh, we have to make initially from the thermodynamic point of view, and this means to consider twenty four hours of operation. Of course, this is from the practical point of view. This is not the 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 the, the best approach because uh, this in, would mean that we have to uh, to to be in place a very large uh, solar thermal storage system, and um, maybe in, in the future. But this is not clear that this could be the best the best option. Now the the thermal storage that are under implementation consider about um, let's say eight to seven eight hours of, of thermal storage and this means that we have to 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 figure out uh, approach to to keep the the MED plant working without consider the considering the possibility to stop the, the the power block this means that okay the the the, the cost of the thermal storage system uh, change very very much depending how how approach we, we consider so this is uh, up to now we have not make any any approach of the of the of the investment cost which is clear that the the, the figure that we are just starting are the one that i show in the in the in the last picture one of the last picture from the this study from flaxol about the the uh, uh, and the sol one plan in which we have uh, with the f the f very fair uh, plant uh, with parabolic thrust, we are in the in the range of, of electricity cost up to 0.2 euro cent per kilowatt hour and uh, water cost of about 1.4 euro per, per cubic meter. So uh, this is the, the the figure. What I can to say is that the the the, the cost of a 50 megawatt solar power plant today. We are in the range of. Uh, it depends if we are increasing, incre in, in including thermal storage. But we are in the range of 280 to 300 plus million euro 
per one uh, power plant of solar power plant of 50 megawatts. Okay, uh, today it's normally uh, is uh, I mean if we go to the to the to the manuals of this, typically we have to say that the the, the minimum just to to implement this is about 2,000 kilowatt hour of DNE, direct normal radiation, to make this. However, I have to say that we have, let's say, uh, just once months ago, I was uh, presented the, the uh, I, I could show the presentation of one solar power plant that is going to be constructed in, in Canada, in Alberta, with an di 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 DNI lower than 180, it was 170, uh, uh, 1,775 1, kilowatt hour. From the practical point of view, I could say that the, um, today uh, we have considered that a minimum 1,900 uh, kilowatt hour per square meter a year. And, and the, the, the value of DNI is, is very uh, significant uh, because it affects quite much the cost because it's I mean, just about 100 more uh, kilowatt hour per square meter affect dramatically or significantly the investment cost of the solar plant. So this is uh, the, a lot of a factor to be, to be considered. But in the range today, I quite consider just to, uh, to make reasonable a plant, we have to consider 1,950 kilowatt hour per, meet, per square meter of direct normal irradiation. The main risk, what are the main risks environmental impacts when operating CS plant for the session onshore? Okay, uh, when you mean onshore, I'm not sure you are, I mean, I, I am considering uh, uh, solar uh, power plants uh, close to the sea, okay? And then uh, the some study that uh, has been made consider that the solar plant could be, uh, could be feasible to consider up to five kilometers from the sea to install the, the, the solar and the sanction plant. If we are considering even more inland, it could maybe it could be the case of Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has a, a very large amount of, of designated water in the middle of the country. From the environmental point of view, the only solution is just to 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 pipe the water from my point of view, to pipe the water to the sea. I mean to install a piping just to 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 discharge the water to the sea because uh, in the, 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 in the uh, to any other discharge is, is absolutely uh, has no sense from the environmental point of view. Uh, any data recharge work on using memory station for replacing your memory? Okay, uh, I have to say I cannot provide you any specific data. Just to say that the just to 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 from my point of view. In the, the 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 water producing by a square meter of membrane from a recharge level of the of uh, uh, membrane distillation is quite similar. Is in the order of magnitude the, the the one that we have from reverse osmosis. So if we are able to develop a, a membrane that could have uh, a good uh, energy recovery and uh, just to, to solve one specific problem. Potentially, we could be in the range of, of use for, for, for uh, this kind of integration to this power plant. As I said before, we are still very far, but uh, I mean, uh, it also makes sense to continue the research just to, to try to achieve this, because this uh, will have a significant improvement against, against MED, because basically we avoid any kind of, of vacuum and uh, any kind of, of uh, energy uh, uh, electricity pumping. This is uh, uh, could be a very significant step forward for this uh, this approach. Okay, this is our own software. We have development of our software for a number of years. We have just made the development and we're testing and just making the assessment with, uh, and now we have to make the final validation of all this with the, uh, the, the experimental plan that uh, CSP plus D plan that we have to, 
uh, we are implementing and we want to just to validate from the experimental point of view all this configuration of integration of MED into the uh, solar power block No, I have no idea of using liquid sulfur of uh, heat traffic medium in CSP um, I don't know if... Uh, no, molten salt no no, no. I, I'm sorry but I have not uh, news about... Uh, I have no information about uh, sulfur as heat traffic medium in CSP The expected lifetime for the plants is. Okay. Uh, the only experience that we have to now is from the 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 plants, the the sex plants in the in the U.S. in California that was installed in the eighty, and because all the the solar power plant that are installing until now has a very very uh, small operational times. It's clear that the, I mean, when we consider the, the the solar power plant, we consider a lifetime of 40 years. But for amortization, 20 years. This means that the second 20 years is from potentially is very attractive from the point of view of the of the of the of the cost. With the point of view of the, of the maintenance, I I can say that for instance, I saw it I saw it last last uh, week. One uh, uh, parabolic trough plant that we have uh, our, our facility, our center, we have more than about 30 years of, of operation. I have to say that these 30 years, we have to, uh, I mean, the, the maintenance has been really minimum. We have just painting the, 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 the collector and just to replace it on some flexible hose. But basically, all the, 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 the Israeli uh, uh, system all the the collector the the tracking and, and the motor are the same from the beginning so from the point of view of of maintenance i think that the, the cost is should be really uh, low in the considering the the second 20 year period of the plant also i can have to say that this the plants of of uh, uh, kramer junction and and uh, uh, sex in california are still in operation. Most of, them, nearly all of them, are still in operation, and uh, they have not major problem of, of maintenance. In Twenty five or twenty plus years after they are uh, start his his operation. Okay. Uh, Okay, when, when we talk about DNI, we, we are talking about uh, the total DNI, GLE DNI. So, of course, clearly in, 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 in winter, the, 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 uh, the radiation typically is not lower. Simply, we have less, less, wind, less, uh, less hours of, of irradiation. Uh, I have to, to put you one example that here in our location, in our center in Almeria, the irradiation typically is higher in winter than in summer because in summer we have some some dust in the in the atmosphere and this is reduced the the the, the normal radiation and in in winter typically the the days are clear and we have higher level of irradiation in in, wi in, in winter than in summer uh, okay that we have it that we have less hours of operation this means that uh, we have to 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 consider either uh, let's say uh, works less hour in in winter, or just to to make the the, the 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 question some kind of of hybridation with with uh, let's say fossil fuel like gas or whatever to ruin uh, the continuous operation of the either in this case the the, the uh, power plant or the the solar the the power and the generation plant or just the generation plant. It is a all the the option are, are possible okay thank you very much julian so i think we we have all the questions now and uh, we adjourn here so thank you very much for this uh, comprehensive uh, analysis on uh, csp desalination 
uh, that is uh, maybe one last um, yes uh, one last uh, question uh, yes. no 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 not yet the first one that I, I I think is the one that we are just uh, making at the platform solar uh. okay okay great so thank you very much Julian for uh, your explanations and your presentations thank you everybody okay. to attend this meeting uh, well now Julian I let you close thank the you very much I you. hope that you enjoy this presentation it will be interesting and useful for you and uh, as I said before I, I keep to you um, uh, uh, <coughs> attention just if you wanted to address Ask me any question of any any, I will try to 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 to, to answer and to address. Thank you very much and, and goodbye to to everybody.